So like I said in the last movie, I just want to look at some other examples as to when and why you would consider using the Puppet Warp tool. Now, you don't have to use just photographs with the Puppet Warp tool. You can use graphics, text, vector shapes, vector masks, you name it. You can work with the Puppet Warp tool. In this case, I want to take a look at how we can work with a piece of text and also how we can work with another photograph, but in a more realistic situation. So I'm going to come back to warp.psd, and this file can be found in your resources folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can apply the Puppet Warp tool to our text. Now again, I'm going to create a smart object out of the text layer. So go ahead and control click on the Macintosh or right click on a Windows machine. And in the contextual menu, go ahead and select convert to smart object. And again, all that does is protect its original state. So if you ever have to get back to it, you can. With that being said, what we want to do now is come over to the edit menu. And under the edit menu, you can choose puppet warp. Now, because it's a smart object, you can start manipulating this text. If it wasn't a smart object, you would have to rasterize the text before you could start working with it. So what's nice about Puppet Warp when working with text is you can create essentially like hand-drawn letters. I imagine that Tim Burton would probably like this tool for creating movie posters for his movies. It gives you a very organic-looking appearance for your text. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come over here and set a pin at the bottom of the P as an anchor point. I'm going to set another pin up here towards the top. Then if you click and drag, notice the letter P is getting distorted. And it's creating, quite frankly, a pretty nice shape that would otherwise be pretty difficult to achieve otherwise. You would have to actually draw this out, which would kind of be a drag. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the R. I'm going to set two pins down at the bottom to essentially set up some anchor points. I'm then going to select the top left. And also, right over here, I'm going to set a pin. But before I move it, I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select both pins. Then I'm going to click and drag, and you'll notice it's getting distorted together. I'm going to do the same thing for the letter A. I'm going to set two pins down at the bottom, and then I'm going to set one here at the center. I'm going to click and drag it, again, starting to distort the text. And then finally, for the W, I'm going to set two pins down at the bottom, and then two at the top. I'm going to select both the pins at the top, click and drag up. I'm going to deselect one of the pins by shift clicking on it to deselect it, allowing me to click and drag this stem up a little bit higher. Then I can add one more point here and click and drag this up a little bit. So once you're happy with this, you can come over and accept the changes to apply and commit the Puppet Warp to the text. And now you'll notice you get essentially what looks like hand-drawn letters. But again, because it's a smart object, you can always turn it off and look at the original text and turn it back on to see the new modified text. So that's one example, to work with Puppet Warp using text. The next thing is a more realistic situation where you have a photograph here of a vine over a wall. Let's say, for example, you wanted to move this vine. You can certainly do that. Make sure that the vine layer is selected. I've already separated out the vine from the background, the wall, in, uh, on my own time, and I've saved it for you just to save a little bit of time. With the vine layer selected, go ahead and right click or control click to convert it to a smart object. Again, it's not necessary to do that to use Puppet Warp, but it certainly is a better way to work in case you ever make a mistake, you have the original to come back to. So with the vine layer selected, let's come over to the edit menu, and under the edit menu, choose Puppet Warp. What I want to do is set up some pins here along the vine, what I really want to do is just kind of move the vine out of the way a little bit. So it's over here on the peach side of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this pin. I'm just going to click and drag it over until I'm happy with the way that it looks. Once you are happy, you can come over to the options bar and you can go ahead and click on the commit puppet warp button. Of course, you can press enter or return on your keyboard as well to accept it. And now we've modified this. Again, we can turn off the smart object to see how we changed this. We just simply move this away from the wall. So the Puppet Warp command is giving you a lot of functionality that wasn't originally there in previous versions of Photoshop to be able to take certain portions of an image, of a shape, of a mask, and manipulate it in a way that gives you more realistic movement. You're essentially setting up these pins, which can act as anchors and pivot points 
and create more realistic type of transformations that otherwise would be, quite frankly, impossible to achieve using something like the free transform tool.